This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing Chanel's Haute Couture Fall Winter 2021-2022 collection. Uh, the video that we're going to be viewing together uh, falls under fair use uh, under YouTube terms because we have taken it from Chanel's own YouTube channel for promotional purposes, obviously, so we're going to review it together. However, I have to say, um, I have changed the music. We will not be playing the original music from their fashion show because that music does fall under copyright. So I have added some neutral music that I usually use for fashion shows, uh, which is fine as well. It's important to see these clothes in action. The music is not as relevant. But just so that you know, if you wish to see the original soundtrack, go to Chanel's YouTube channel and watch the fashion show there. But Together, we're going to watch today uh, with this, with new music, uh, the, the collection. A collection of 37 pieces, not so big as we have been used to in the past from Chanel, but nevertheless, it's going to be very interesting to see what Virginie Via has come up with this time around. Before we get to the fashion show, might I remind you to subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Thumb up the video if you're liking it thus far and push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Nick well spelled together. Gain access to extra perks there as well. Join the fun. Thank you to all my patrons and members who have already pledged. And this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. So thank you to all my co-viewers and watchers who are reviewing uh, this collection together with me. And uh, you can also partake in my live streams every Saturday on my channel and uh, take part in the fun. The live streams are really long. We, we shoot a lot of videos together. So in the chat, seriously, hi there, Camelia. Yes, I am wearing Vivian Westwood, actually, her unisex collection. Uh, but I am wearing a Chanel Camellia from spring summer 2021. And uh, this is the closest you're going to get within the Pret-a-Porter range to Haute Couture because these are handmade. So this is kind of a little homage to the Haute Couture of Chanel by wearing one of their camellias. And that's why a lot of people are always surprised. Why do their camellias cost so much? Well, because they are handmade and they are kind of the closest you get within Pret-a-Porter that comes to, to the essence of Chanel and to Haute Couture. So... A lot of people don't respect their camellias, the, the Chanel camellias. They kind of make fun of them. A lot of these YouTubers, you know, luxury vloggers are going to go into Chanel boutiques, uh, you know, watching the sales, going to the pre-sales and looking at all the stuff. But then whenever they would pass by the camellias, they'll be like, who would want to buy this? I would want to buy this. And whoever else is really serious about the heritage of Coco Chanel would understand the beauty and uh, the masterfulness that goes into making these so think twice before you see a camellia next time and you just want to poop on it. All right. So let's get to the video, shall we? Let's review it together. <clears throat> Haute Couture. Palais Galliera, City of Paris Fashion Museum. So this is the place where the exhibition on Coco Chanel's own creations took place. I don't know if they prolonged it again, but it was supposed to close in March. So it's a very symbolic venue. And we're outside because of the lockdown, and this way it's kind of healthier. People breathe outdoors. There's no aerosols of viruses mixing up. So I get that they're doing it outside. However, this fisheye camera and this whole setting, I don't know if it's doing the clothes much justice. It's very dried out the aesthetic even though Sofia Coppola is part of it I don't know if she did a good job but let's see okay so the clothes thus far as you can see they're not like showing them to us oh my gosh she can't even walk what's what's wrong with it um they're not really showing them to us now they are in a close-up but the girls are all walking out at the same time so what we are getting here is kind of a um, close-up details of a lot of in intricate workmanship when it comes to beading which is typical to Couture and Chanel shoulders the cut we have a little bit of Karl Lagerfeld reminiscence there you know Virginie is homaging him especially in the shoulder area that's something that Karl could have done would have done uh, however she does play with tight silhouettes in certain spots which is very girly which is something Virginie Via has been doing in, in uh, Pet à Porter as well here we have this weird game now this is a fall winter collection right so we have this 
tweed kind of heavier jacket, which is very reminiscent of Dior, more so than Chanel. This other jacket here, this one is more Chanel-ish. However, showing the belly naked and that kind of detail there, not really feeling that vibe. That bow in the back of the hair, perfection, that is so Chanel. Um, but nevertheless, this combo, okay, how, you see the jacket, okay, that top looks like the cheapest pret a porter piece. That skirt with that top and that jacket is a total no-go. In my opinion, it's like a total fail. Again, we have this top, summery top for winter. Don't forget, you guys, this is a winter collection. Again, free the belly button, just a little strip over the breasts, but this is a winter collection. Yes, she does have a coat. I guess figure out your own shirt to wear underneath. This is an interesting color. I love the bowl hanging really long behind the head. Um, again, that top is, I, in my opinion, just not it. The color of the coat is interesting. The material is interesting. The shoulders are oversized. We're going back to the 80s. Those are like, sh oh, those are not even shoulder pads. That's a structured shoulder that really delivers oversight. This one as well. But again, this type of collar does not scream Chanel to me. The combo we've seen already in the past in the spring summer collection with this very wide skirt like we have here in this case, um, something we've seen at Dior, something that we've seen at Chanel too, but it's not in quintessentially Chanel. Here's, here's Chanel's own uh, Fitting lady who is also modeling uh, with that kind of mini concoction of an ensemble with the mixed patterns. Mm -hmm. The floral design in winter, how groundbreaking, right, uh, uh, Miss Miranda? I, again, winter collection in bloom. <laughs> I know it's not winter everywhere at the same time in the world, so. European winter is Australian summer, I get it, but I have the feeling a lot of these clothes are very summery. Even though the beading is beautiful, that ethereal color of those baby blues is to die for, but still. Again, pilots, pilots, beading, beading. But also certain simplicity. Now this one at least covers the knee, the skirt, which means Coco Chanel has been respected there because she hated knees. She always wanted to cover the knees. This one doesn't quite cover the knee though. It's a beautiful tweed, but does it warrant an haute couture status or is it more a prêt-à-porter or a métier d'art to each their own, right? And I'm getting really tired of haute couture being all about proving your point about knowing how to bead pearls on clothes. There's more to haute couture than that. Panel of beaded pearly flowers. Okay, wow. You know they're gonna pop off when you start wearing them. Obviously, who can afford a dress that expensive is probably gonna wear it just once. Anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This is a very complicated combination. That skirt alone might work, the jacket alone might work, but the two together. Again, belly button naked, skin showing. I don't find that elegant. I, I, I just don't. This whole idea of, okay, here we have the, the the chest show. This is very Armani. I mean, it could have been a Marlene Dietrich uh, look. It's a bit more loose fitted. That scarf, no. I don't care if it's handmade. It's just, it ain't it. It does not bring more value to the coat, to the pants. I, and if you need it to, okay, this piece I like. This. I know it's skimpy and I'm like, what the hell, this is for winter? Yeah, but this is kind of a, it's a, this is something new. That outfit is something new. And we're gonna get back to that outfit again. Okay, this is uh, Lolita trying to live her best life in winter. Again, another Lolita moment. I, I okay, I'm sorry, Virginie, this is, this ain't it. This green piece ain't it. And this lovely lady, the, the, their token model, the only one who's a little bit healthier looking, right? Uh, they always dress her wrong. Every time they give, she's always, you know, in every Chanel show since a couple of seasons, they always, why are these clothes look like they're ill-fitted? They don't really, and I'm fine with having looser fits. They don't have to, oh, the camellias under the rim of the hat are to die for, and general flowers. But why are these, why do they all seem so ill-fitted? Yes, fine, they can be comfortable, but they don't have to look like they're ill-fitted. They can be comfortable and look well-fitted at the same time. It is haute couture after all, isn't it? 
this is a good one. This is something that uh, is very Chanel. Uh, could have been something that Coco made in the 30s. Minus maybe the feathers, but the feathers are a modern touch. Okay, we got another spring outfit for winter. Um, again, the fit is not the best. This lady is, is dangerously skinny. Uh, the fit of it, the way it flows, it just doesn't move right to me. Um, it feels like there's something... Something is slightly off, whether in the fabric, the texture, the textile, the, the thickness of it, it just doesn't work. This outfit, it's like it came out of another collection. It is very Chanel, it's super elegant. It's, it, uh, that outfit, this one as well, could have been Lagerfeld-ish. Um, cinch it in just a little bit. Now, this one, again, I, I, I see the 20s reference. You see how ill-fitted it is? How those buttons just... It doesn't maintain a form. They fly as you walk. That does not create um, quality look. It feels like it's sloppy. Uh, it's it's the weight. You see? Look look at the buttons. And, and how these layers on top of each other, they're too thin, but they're carrying too much weight. So as she moves, they move in a way that uh, creates... Um, distortion of, of the symmetry and um it's a burden for the eye it, it's not uh not, not very elegant although i the idea of it is very elegant it's just not executed properly okay so yeah wedding dress um i love the hat with the bow it's really pretty and with the veil sure but it's a wedding dress over the size shoulder pad. I mean, we're back in the 80s, you guys. And like, she has like confetti. It looks like she has confetti in the veil. Cute, very 80s reminiscent. Probably some reference to some movie or something that Virginie Via saw because after all, she was a costume designer. So she probably has her cinematographic reference here. However, which woman wants to have the Incredible Hulk shoulders uh, on her wedding day? It's, it's a conceptual piece, but not conceptual enough to make me remember it. The hat is memorable, but that's it. It, it ends there. I love the long bows. They're super elegant in that. They create the silhouette. Those bows hanging really deep in the back, they create the silhouette. That's where it's at for me. Now the 37 looks hit the stair. I think they're 37. She's still feeling her oats in her wedding day. <laughs> now we get to see the color combinations together. Yes, when you put all of these dots of color together, they do have harmony. Um, the color palette is working as a total. The individual pieces to me, and again, they're token model. Oh my God, why do they always dress her like that? She's so beautiful. You could emphasize the beauty of her body. Instead, they kind of look at her, poor thing. She's all the way down in there in the corner. Very unfortunate. Here's Virginie wearing the spring summer 2021 jacket from Prêt à Porter. She came out, said, hey girl, how you going? How you doing? Okay, bye. And she gone, you know, she's like, yeah, we're good at this. Um, huh. And there go our models. Um, there goes the fall, winter, or shall I say spring, summer 2021 collection. There are a couple of jackets there, but it's mostly very summery piece. Ah, oh, there she goes. The lady got the bouquet. Uh, seems like she's married already probably, but oh well, I guess yeah, it's never too late to divorce and get married again. With the participation of Sofia and Roman Coppola. Sofia Coppola. You could have done a better film and job than you did. If you're gonna hire Sofia Coppola, make her make a real movie out of it. This was a little bit, okay. Well, all right. Now, listen, I'm not gonna leave you with this uh, alone. Um, I have also a selection of my top favorites and my worst, <laughs> my, my top five and my worst five. So, uh, because I wanna get a closer look at them. Let me show you immediately. Let me jump into the top five or let me just read a couple of comments this collection makes me want to die says uh su uh, hang huang lie to me 101 says the clothes on the token model look like they're from h&m she's so beautiful and could wear amazing looks this collection oh 
Nice finale. Love it, says MK. This... Uh, Drax says, this made Dior's offering look good. We're going to be reviewing Dior as well. I'm just being nitpicky, but the wedding dress model walks like she's on drugs. Yeah, I think she was too much in actress mode and not really feeling her model mode moment in that moment. She was being more actress than model. So I think she was in her... I'm sure in her head she was playing some movie. She, I think she was acting um, rather than just being herself in modeling. And she was just like acting this excited girl on her wedding day wearing Chanel haute couture. So of course it's exciting, but she should have toned it down and kept it more cool. Or she should have gone completely kooky, but we're not in the 90s. It wouldn't have been well seen for models to show too much character. As was the case, they wanted models to show more character in the 90s. So I guess we're wearing a bows, righty? <laughs> uh, John Howard says, not incredible Hulk shoulders, OMG. Kami V says, no love for this collection. Black Noise says, whoomp whoomp. I don't want big shoulder. I don't want. I don't want big shoulders. Says uh, Su Hung Huang. Uh, veil is cool, at least. Black noise. We like veils. She's getting married, but the groom died. Oh my God! Jesus's comment. Gary says, I prefer the Prêt à Porter collection. Neoprene wedding dress. Asks Jack. Black noise says, boring AF wedding dress. Looks ill-fitted. Says uh, Su Hung Huang. Black noise. Drop waists require so much more tailoring for movement. Yes. Yes. The bride is very Merkel. Oh, Mr. Phil Fabulous, the shade. Su Hong Kwang, I hate the wedding dress. <laughs> oh, that's it, huh? Says Stephanie. The fabric and the buttons themselves flop, says Cami V. Uh, yeah, Su Hong Kwang says the buttons look like an afterthought. Doesn't seem to be a lot of quality control, says Stephanie. Those buttons are jingle jangling. Uh, Virginie has been making the waistline so low for some reason. I'm loving the 20s reference to a low waistline, but to do the low waistline, you gotta, you gotta be very, very clever how you construct it so that the movement works with the body flow, so that the that the movement of the body works with the flow of the garment and the fabrics that you're working with. And this just wasn't it in many cases, in some of the looks at least. Philip says, girl, those buttons, very poor design. Stephanie says, love the white hat. Jesus says, proper for global warming. Fall equals winter. Black Noise says, but this is not winter. I like the white number, says Stephanie. Black Noise says, okay, white hat is a vibe, but not winter. Uh, the fit makes the hip looks solo, solo. Oh, the hips look solo. No, but that, that's a 20s vibe. That's not that bad. Um... Lily Bonfi says, yes, there is no tailoring in most. Easter yellow, says Black Noise. Da Fook, says Black Noise. Jack says, the pleated top was pretty. Black Noise says, I'm okay with the black and white number. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, wide brimmed hats for winter. Lie to me, 101 says, the leggings look weird. They do look ill-fitted, says Black Noise. I hate the hat, says <laughs> um, Su Hung Huang. Black Noise says, how? Uh, these foamy pastel ethereal things are winter wear how? We like the long bows, says Jack Dean. Yeah, the long bows are very elegant. Not a fan of the of the low hang skirts, says A1H. All right, well, this is fall winter. Looks very cold, Stephanie says. Yeah, I mean, let's get to the five looks that are my favorite looks. Uh, in, um, from... The top five from the, they're all good in my opinion, but from the lowest to the best. Okay, let me show you the first one. Okay, this is very Chanel to me, uh, very 30s Chanel. This could have been one of her last collections before she closed her ateliers or her maison um, during the Second World War. So, um, especially this little volant going on here, minus the feathers. Um, I know that the jump between that kind of blue hues of, of the feathery skirt and the white is kind of a jump and then we got that black belt in between the black that repeats again in the bow. The fact that the bow is black, it saves the fact that the belt is black as well. They align well and they create the two black moments between the white ruffly um, top. This works for me. It's kind of like a modern take on 30s Chanel. It works. 
ish. It works. <laughs> it's, 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 I save it. It's one of the top five. The next one. Okay, I'm living for this one. Uh, I'm living for this one for a reason. Because this is very, very modern. I, it stuck out to me as something that is an idea for an upcoming collection. It, it is cocotte. It is very much 60s uh, Romy Schneider in a Visconti movie, you know, like Boccaccio 70. I love that movie two bits. And especially this two, um, the, the two rows of, of, the, of the ruffle bit of the top is very Chanel in the 60s and 50s. So Virginie knows what she's doing here. And that particular, this is all like a mini little skirt. You, you would think it's a negligee, but no, it's actually a dress. Um, kinky, yeah. And it's all open on the sides. It has all these buttons like going, you know, all the way up there. You can close it or open it. It has the little pizza going all around. And it's very 60s. Is it a little bit too skanky for Chanel? Yes, but that's what makes it so modern. It's like a futuristic version of an haute couture coquette. And uh, it bring, it gives me major Romy Schneider Chanel vibes. And I'm particularly fond of that green. I think there's something here. This piece has a lot of potential. It really does, you guys. And I know it looks like a small piece, like there's not much work that went, it's not a long dress and it's not winter at all. Um, and no, I know it's, it's <laughs> it technically doesn't look like winter. But then again, if you're at some, you know, in, inside indoors affair and it's just. Actually, no, you know, this is Virginie Viard at her best, I think, because she's a costume designer. This is photogenic AF. This would work amazingly in a movie. This is a costume for a movie. This tells a story, so we, we're, we're not supposed to, to view this as, oh, is it wearable or not? This is a costume that, that screams 60s Chanel in the future. It's a, she could have been one of the prostitutes from AI, from you know um, Stanley Kubrick's last movie that he never finalized, so um, Steven Spielberg had to finish it, <laughs> and um, well, actually directed the whole thing. She looks like from that future, the artificial intelligence Kubrick slash Spielberg future. And I'm living for this. Honestly, it's a vibe. Next one. Okay. I'm loving this because again, this is giving me late twenties Chanel. It is, it is giving me that lower waist that works. This one is cinched in right. The beautiful floral patterns, um, the embroidery. It doesn't look like much when you see it like this because we're so used to colorful, flashy fashion that this one is so toned down. It's so humble and modest. It's because it's so humble and mod modest and because it seems so simple, that's why it's so Chanel. Uh, and the florals on it are just to die for. And I'm loving the black, white, and gray. And then the only colors that we get are underneath the hat with a, a few pastel colored camellias. Uh, which are made by the same maison that does the Pret-à-Porter camellias. So it, they are haute couture. That's why I always say, you guys, the camellias are where it's at. This one is made in uh, crepe de soie, so it's a, it's a silk. It's a mattified silk. It's, it absorbs light so beautifully. But anyway, uh, of course, it's summer, not winter. But <laughs> florals, winter. I mean, again, we're... And the spring flowers underneath the hat it like makes absolutely no sense is virginie trying to hint at the fact that um they're a little bit late with production so if you do order an haute couture piece like this it won't be ready before spring anyway so maybe that's why makes sense uh, fair enough okay let's move on to the next one um, this is something carl has done similar in the past uh covering the dress with flowers um with that plissé at the bottom of the skirt of the of the dress of the gown um loving the hair so simple hairdo simple white dress beautiful with those shoes with a two-tone shoe uh it's again this one screams 30s chanel but with the techniques used today they probably would ne have never done those flowers they would never drape those flowers or 
stack and layer those flowers in the way that on, on the chest area on the bust as they have now so that's a modern take but all the ruffly bits at the underneath the flower pattern and all the way to the floor that is very 30s chanel so this is this is a gorgeous piece but again spring not winter next one my favorite piece of the entire collection this is to die for this is literally i have the feeling the entire collection revolved around this dress it's like this is the dress inside which virginie put most attention to she gave most attention to this dress design wise because as you see the panels as she walks they open and underneath it's as if we had a flower that's about to blossom and bloom and you have all those little petals and that, that whole vibe inside the inside life of that dress that white hiding underneath the black with all the bows holding the open it's just and the shoulders popping up and then again all the camellias hiding underneath the hat this is beautiful and then that little twist because they could have done a black and white shoe but no they did a rose like a pinky rose shoe with the black tip delicious that pink rounds it all up they could have stayed black and white no the shoe went rose uh of course spring summer this is not winter at all but ah and that peplumy moment around the hips that kind of pops out uh, at, at at that level Th this is genius i'm living for this piece it's so 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 beautiful uh, and it's a pity that the rest of the collection wasn't playing with this theme. This has so much potential and it, it's a missed opportunity. But then again, the pieces that were not so good allow this piece to shine more because then this piece has less competition. So because this piece less co has less competition, we love it even more. So now let's get to my worst five from bad to worst so the first one of the five is bad and then it gets worse and worse and worse okay let me show you the first one of my top worst five I right, that top yeah guys <laughs> that just ain't it and that skirt with that kind of v and the pleases and how it all moves i mean the jacket alone okay but it's the combination that total look Oh my God. And that, that top, that, that little crochet top or embroidered top or whatever perforated embroidered top. Yeah, guys, this ain't it. This ain't it. And I'm tired of always Chanel having to do that black around the eyes. It's always the same makeup, you know? It's getting really heavy. Okay, next one. Olive oil started dressing yellow instead of black and red. Um, this is something Moschino could have made. Uh, in this case, the low waist really does not fit with this material, with this fabric. Maybe the model is also too skinny. The shoulders, they worked on the shoulders. They made that Chanel shoulder work. But these pockets on the breast area, they're already... You, you bet your life, they steamed the living life out of this piece. And it still crinkles and it's still god it just this just doesn't work and then we've seen her walk on the side you know and the whole thing is the whole dress is kind of like really three-dimensional so when she walks by you you see this kind of huge chunky bit at the bottom it's almost as if those roughly three layers three bits have like a metal wires in them so that it kind of never the the dress never really has a chance to deflate it always stays open but not in a good way uh and I feel, unfortunately, you have to be this skinny to pull it off because, because of the cut of it. It's just not tailored right. I'm sorry. Orsi says, I like this dress for... No, wait. Stephanie says, I actually like the skirt part of that yellow dress. Yeah, but it's not the skirt part. This is a dress. It's, they're not separable. They're not separates. So that's why we can't... If she offered me that bottom as a skirt, I would judge it differently but this is a dress so we can't cut it off it would fall off so we got to judge what we have here what we have here is a one piece 
that's all she gives us. So if she gives us that one piece, we can't say, yeah, I like the button. But, you know, it's like, well, this, the, yeah, guys. Nothing against the color, but I have something against the combination with that color and that fabric, at, 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 um, particular for the pockets and... Okay, next one. Yeah. It's like literally they had no time to put a dress on top of the undergarments. So they let the model go out with the undergarments. Now, again, for maybe a costume for a movie. I mean, who would pay haute couture prices for this? This is at best prêt-à-porter, but also an afterthought. This is not haute couture. This is not haute couture. I'm sorry, but I mean, yeah, it is because it is. Because they say it is and because they made it by hand. Okay. Anyway, let me go to the next one, which is even more tragic. <laughs> yeah, guys. What they did to her hair, to her eyes, how they dressed, how this, the top part, it's just, they didn't even tie it properly, so it's like falling more to one side. It's like they try really hard to make her look bad every season, this poor model. And she is a beautiful woman. This ain't it. This is just not haute couture, and it's so, I mean, and if it is haute couture, then work day and night, effortlessly and tirelessly, to make this thing fit like it's made for the gods, because this ain't it, Virginie, this just ain't it, I'm so sorry, with all due respect, and I love what she does, but this way, this ain't it. All right. Okay. Um... Black Noise says, this is like what my mom would wear on a lazy Sunday to make pancakes. Let me go to the next one. <laughs> okay, so now imagine this model, super skinny. Okay, and they're putting two layers on her, the, the pants and then the, the skirt. No, actually, is that a, a short skirt or, or is, are those like uh, culottes? I don't know if that's like a shorts and then pants underneath or if it's a, like a short skirt and then pants underneath but the way it bubbles up on the side already makes her look disproportionate to say the least and then this the ruffly bit here that you pull together at the waist and then that slightly lighter <laughs> top fall winter mind you this is a fall winter collection okay um this the blue is very pajama vibes Who can pull this off on a red carpet? I mean, at the end of the day, who's going to wear haute couture? Either you're some really rich person from the Middle East or, you know, Chinese multi-billionaire, whatever, and then what are you going to do with it? You're going to wear it to some private party for other rich people, or you're going to wear it to a red carpet event if you're in the movie scene or the music. But, but who could pull this off? You know, my question is, like, who could wear this and make it look really chic? Mr. Philip Fabulous says, hospital gown, uh, gown uh, green color, very 2021. Yeah, but that's kind of, that would be in really poor taste if that was the afterthought. Um, you can't wear this in the snow, says Jeff. Kimberly says, nope to the jammies. I did this in the 90s. Uh, Jack says, do they want their clients to freeze to death? I mean, as I said, if you're rich enough, you can warm yourself up with other ways, in other ways, right? Yes, ease go to an evening event in Canadian winter wearing this garbage, says Black Noise. Oh, please. Oh, yes, please. Go to an evening event in Canada with this. Um, I would sleep in it happily, says Orsi. Yeah, especially if it's silk. Lily Bonfi says, yes, feminine product. <laughs> That's for a key party. Oh, my God, Kate. Black Noise says, I might sleep in this. Aisha is laughing. Anya says, we could all wear it at home. This winter in lockdown, again, loungewear. 
Mr. Philip says, nah, you're going to wear this to bed. Lord says to Audrey, I've only been to Blackpool once for a stag weekend and ended up sleeping in a phone box wearing something like this. <laughs> uh, we can't be cold on the yacht, darling, says Audrey. Garçon says, not something Coco would have done so bad. Laurie says, oh, answering to my question. Alexander says, uh, my excuse for Chanel, all the models had a laxative party and that's why nothing fits. Oh my God, Lord Charfield says, more misplaced buttons. May says, was this lockdown inspired? Because it feels like quarantine couture for the people who want custom Chanel jammies. I mean, honestly though, like had she done a full collection of only pajamas as haute couture, that would have been revolutionary. I would have been like, oh, that's a concept. Lockdown, haute couture for the lockdown, pajamas, comfortable, stay-at-home haute couture. I would be down for that because that would be socially also an interesting comment on, on the society we live in. Uh, I would have loved that, but uh, unfortunately, she didn't go in that direction. Uh, Sarah Lee says, a collector for the people down and a collection for the people down and yeah, because it's summer when it's uh, winter in Europe. Kate says, I definitely, I would definitely wear this to bed. Leslie Craven, cost per wear, a jammy is a good investment. Yeah, because you would be wearing haute couture every night, not just for one red carpet event. Mr. Phil Fabi says, we need that one channel to interview the seamstresses to tell us how special the collection is. Mm, don't get me even started on that one channel. Um, MK is sure there are some little details we are not able to see on screen. Right. Okay, and those little details that we cannot see on screen are not the big reasons to drop 100,000 euro on this piece. Letty says, the Coco Chanel Manifesto collection going on in Paris has more haute couture dresses than this. Agreed. But then again, Coco Chanel was Coco Chanel. There's nobody like her. <laughs> um, Alexa Gallagher, Mount Nana, my Nana really has a night... Oh, Nana really has a nightgown just... My Nana really has a nightgown just like that. This would be my bottom five of the, of the whole collection. The baby blue being the worst. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about this collection. Maybe you loved it. You know, everybody has their reasons. So, uh, thumb up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel. Become a member today or a patron. Get access to extra perks. Amongst the many extra perks, you also get to be listed in the final credit score at the end. The credits running at the end of every video as co-producer of the Fashion Bunker. Um, Black Noise says, hold up $100,000. For seafoam nightwear. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Suhang Huang, the bottom three have scared me for life. Oh my gosh. The little pajama thing was probably a lot less than that, but couture prices are insane, says Jack Dean. Um... Well, it is a three-piece, so it could cost that much. And you have to get the shoes as well. So it's a three-piece outfit. Handmade, just for you. Pajama for your plaisir. Free the nipple from the constraints of Chanel, says Audrey Jane. I ask for compensation, says uh, Su Hung Huang. Jesus says, I know, cha. Jane Davenport says, thank you. Oops. Alexa Gallagher says, I know I said someone last time, he said we don't talk about, but I know it's not that. <laughs> Nip naps are out. Garçon Reveux says, on my way uh, to buy a camellia brooch from Chanel. Thanks for the advice. It's technically haute couture. Yes. And they're beautiful. And especially the silk ones, the ones that have a lot of petals, the ones that really go for that 60s uh, Chanel look, which is not really the Karl Lagerfeld more rounded 80s Camellia that everybody kind of usually goes for. This is more quintessentially Coco. And a lot of them have really, really tiny double C's that you barely see. You see it if it reflects the light. But I love the fact that 
you almost don't see the, the logos, which with Chanel Haute Couture, they never put a logo visible for a reason, because it's more classy without the logo. That's the reason why Haute Couture never shows the, the branding, while Pret-a-Porter is made to promote the brand. So you buy for a lot of money the Pret-a-Porter pieces to promote the brand. That's why the logo is on it. There's, and you're paying a lot more for Haute Couture also to not show the brand. You're paying to not show the brand. Just like on YouTube, you, you can pay extra YouTube to not have ads run through your videos. You pay more to Chanel to have, to have no Chanel ads running through your clothes, but you can only do that if you have enough class and style. Because if you're too weak, you're gonna want to wear the logo to show off that you can have the logo. And uh, that's kind of opposite of class. As Chanel itself, the brand, does it shows us that the real class is in haute couture and you pay a lot to for them to take that logo off just think about that food for thought thank you guys so much for watching until next time never forget to never give up on love love you all see you soon take care bye